praise the Lord. I feel him. He's, he's here. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask the usher would please come forth if he would. I, and uh, uh, Caleb's got a shower at four Sunday also. Y'all keep that in mind. Come on up, Mike. If you would, please, sir. I'll just pray over it and I'll get ready. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, uh, bless the gift and the giver tonight, God, in a special way, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I tell you, I just, uh, I love that song. I just feel that song, song in my spirit. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let me get my specs out of here. Well, I just want you to know y'all confirmed the word tonight with all them prayer requests that we had. But what I'm going to be preaching on tonight, ministering on tonight, ever how the Lord wants me to do it, it's going to be good because we all need it. Uh, occasionally, we have to refresh ourselves and revitalize ourselves on what we're supposed to do as a Christian, our part. Because God certainly does his, amen. Praise God. Now, let's see if I can get this thing turned on. Brother Nathan's got her all fired up for me here. Let's see if I can find which one. I yeah, here we go. Well, I pushed that button. <laughs> oh, yeah, had another button. <laughs> no. We got it. Look at here. Persevering prayer. How many of you ever got into one of those? I know some people in here is in some of those. I'll tell you right now, I, I, I got some I'm, I'm persevering on and keep pressing on. Uh, because God tells us to do that, you know. You know, sometimes you just don't have to, you don't pray one time and think uh, uh, that it's going to happen, you know. We're going to look at some of the reasons why tonight, but a persevering prayer is persistence. You persistently keep asking the Lord for what he promised you, amen. And I've got some things, and uh, I know some other people's got some things here that you continually to ask the Lord uh, for these things uh, that you need. And I'll tell you right now, if it's according to God's word, you're going to get them. You're going to get an answer to them for what you're going to get. Now, sometimes we have to wait on the Lord. Sometimes he knows best. You know what I mean? i tell you right now, answered prayer is a divine blood bought right. And we as Christians do not need to lose heart when we pray and we don't see it happening like McDonald's. I'm, I'm, I'm impatient sometimes. I like that quick uh, service, you know, and you get used to it and everything. But I tell you, God's an on-time God, and he's going to uh, uh, do what he does because he's God. Amen? But I'm here to tell you tonight, answered prayer is divine blood bought. It's done, been bought, praise God. We have a right to it. Now, uh, we're going to look at some other stuff uh, here tonight too. You know, and uh, as we start uh, uh, looking at some of this stuff and when we pray, we don't want to give in to doubt. Sometimes that happens, doesn't it? Sometimes we'll pray and say, well, Lord, maybe you don't want to uh, do, do it, you know, but he wants to do it. So we don't want to get into doubt. I'm not, uh, and we don't want to get into fear. Sometimes we get into fear and uh, stuff going on. And uh, when you pray and everything, because why? God did not give us the spirit of fear, did he? 
He gave us uh, of love, power, and uh, that sound mind. Amen. He gave us those things. And we don't want, one of the big ones I preached on here a while back, uh, we don't want to get into unbelief, do we? I tell you right now, you know, sometime I'm going to be honest, we have to ask God. I say, God, help my unbelief. I want to be strong, God. I don't want to be, uh, have unbelief anywhere. And I'll tell you right now, don't feel bad if you've had that sometimes because his disciples did. His disciples that was with him had unbelief, didn't they? So we need to uh, look uh, for those things uh, in our prayer life when we uh, are, 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 are talking to the Lord about them. And don't get discouragement. You know, don't have excuses for unbelief. When not answered immediately, you need to persist and press on. Amen? You need to keep pressing on to the Lord. You know, you've heard the old saying, uh, when I was in management, stuff like that, you know, you had somebody, the lightest squeak was the one, you had a customer or something, something was going on, you had a lot of stuff going on, but uh, the loudest uh, uh, squeak was the one you owe first. You see what I mean? Because you want to shut it up, because why? It's getting on your nerves. Hey, I got all this going on, and that can keep squeaking over, squeaking over, so I'm going to have to oil that in first, I'm going to have to take care of that in first, and get it off, and get it gone, okay? <laughs> Excuse me. So, uh, that's some of the things uh, that we look at uh, in persevering uh, uh, prayer we're going to look at today here. Let's look just a little bit further and uh, get into some. Uh, I want to look at Luke uh, 18, 1 through 8. Fixing to look at it in a minute. It's talking about a widow. She got results uh, for uh, the method that he, she used. And Jesus talked uh, 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 to his people and talked to us about the methods that this widow used. And we need to use it sometime ourselves. <clears throat> you know, sometimes you say, well, I pray at one time and God's got a hold of it and it's going to be done. Well, sometimes you have to keep coming back and, Lord, I need to remind you, God, I need this healing, God. Or, Lord, I need to remind you I need this financial situation taken care of. Or, Lord, I need you to remind you to uh, take care of my family. Uh, you know, certain things in our life, we need to remind the Lord and keep bringing it back to him because why? He's going to say, hey, somebody got to, do something with that squeaker. Let's get it oiled out and get on, move on with the program. But I want to look at some things today. <clears throat> Tonight, uh, I want to look at this widow lady. I'll read these uh, scriptures here. And he spake a parable unto them, this end, that man ought always to pray and not to faint. Look at there. We're supposed to pray. Did y'all know that? We're supposed to pray. I'll tell you right now, one of the hardest things to do being a Christian is praying. Uh, it is for me. I mean, I tell you, there's so much things going on in my life. I read and study and do all that, you know. But really taking time to get with the Lord and praying, uh, that's a hard thing to do. But we got to do it. We need to do it continually. When we're out there in our job place or working or doing things like that, we need to pray. We need to continue in prayer. You know, off and on. You can be doing stuff, talking to the Lord. I do that a lot. I'll be doing something uh, out there working or doing something. I'm talking to the Lord about something <clears throat> because he loves us. Amen. And we're his, and he wants that relationship with us. And, you know, in prayer, we got to do some things. Look here. He spake a parable unto uh, them to this end, that men are always to pray and not to faint. You know, sometimes you get in prayer and say, man, I pray, 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 but, you know, Lord, I need you to do something here. Well, when God, when you pray and done your part, God, it's in God's uh, ballpark then, per se. You know what I mean? And he's the one who answers the prayer. Look at here. Saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God. Now this was a, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Now this old judge, he didn't fear God. He was an old, uh, rough old judge. He didn't fear nobody. He done what he wanted. He's a judge, you know. Some of them judges get uh, to the point they think they're the kings and all that. Well, they ain't. Praise God. But some of them think they are. Well, this old judge right here, he didn't fear God and he didn't, uh, he re neither regarded man. He didn't look like he didn't fear nobody. He's going to do what he done. But I want to show you what this widow lady done to him. Got on his nerves. Got him upset. Got him out of order here. Look here. Let's look at the next one. Verse 3. And there was a widow in that city, and she came to him saying, Avenge me, uh, my adversary. Now, evidently, she had some misjustice done to her. 
And she was going to this judge and crying out to him, I want you to avenge and get, the, I, want the, uh, I want this settled. I want it done. And I want you to do it. I want you to make a judgment call here. And I want you to get this fixed. I want you to avenge what happened to me because some misjustice was done to me. And I want you to get it fixed. And I, I, I just about demand that you get it to fix. Look here. It said right here saying, avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, though I fear not God nor regard man. In other words, man, I don't fear man. I don't uh, fear God or nobody, but this woman is getting on my nerves. She is persistently coming to me. She's persevering. She keeps coming to me and telling me to avenge her, avenge her, give her a judgment call for the wrong that was done to her. Now let's look a little further. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Yet because this widow troubled me, I will. See right here? Yet because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me down. Now look at that. Now here's this big old strong judge up there who didn't fear God and he didn't fear man and he was going to do, do it his way. But this widow lady kept coming at him persistently coming at him, continually coming, and she would weary him, wore him down. In other words, he's getting on his nerves, things is happening there, and he wants to get this resolved because he can't stand no more. Because every time he turned around, probably that lady was in his face, uh, hollering, when you going to do it? When you going to judge? When you going to avenge? When you going to do what you're supposed to do? In my case, forget about all them other cases. You fix my case. I want it done. And she was probably up there the next morning. Have you done anything to my case? Have you judged on my case? Are you going to avenge me? Are you going to give me justice? And boy, after a while, he's probably getting like, hey, man, is it morning? She's going to be back over here again. In other words, she persistently kept coming to that judge and telling him. And by doing that, guess what? Let's look and see. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge saith. And shall not God avenge his own elect, uh, which cry day and night unto him, though uh, he bear long with them? Now, what the Lord's saying right here, uh, this unjust judge who feared not God and man or whatever, because of the persistence of that woman kept coming back to him and hollering at him and, and uh, trying to get uh, her judgment done and the things uh, taken care of, it got on his nerves and he got upset. And guess what? He made a judgment. He got it fixed so it would get her out of his hair, you see? And the Lord said right here, and shall not God avenge his own? So we're not, what, when we cry out to God, doesn't he love us and he's going to take care of our situations uh, uh, through prayer, which cry day and night unto him. Now, what did it say? Which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. I tell you that he will avenge them speedingly. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith uh, on the earth. Now, I'll tell you right now, persistence in prayer. The Lord's telling us right here. She is an example of how she got her prayer, I mean, her judgment call answered. She persistently kept coming back. And sometimes in our walk with the Lord and our prayer life with the Lord, we have to persistently keep coming back, keep coming back and persevering, coming and asking the Lord about our situation. But now there's some things that we have to do uh, 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 to make that happen. It's got to be in God's word. It's got to be, uh, you know, he knows about our needs, but he, we lack that part. We got to pray to him. He wants us to pray to him. And, um, you know, and we ask God that give us to all men. That's who we're going to ask, praise God. And we got to ask in faith, ain't we? We got to ask in faith uh, that God will answer the prayer. And when we pray, I'm getting a little ahead of myself right here. We pray to who? We pray to the Father. We're going to see that in just a minute. And uh, we pray in whose name when we pray? In Jesus' name. And, uh, and by the Holy Spirit. And that's one we're going to touch base on a little bit more uh, this evening before I get through because uh, I think that's a very important one too. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, you see, see what this widow lady, she kept persisting persevering prayer, do me justice, do me justice. And so uh, let me tell you, God delays uh, from all wise purpose. 
In other words, when God delays, he's an all-wise God. And he has a purpose sometime if, he, if your prayer has been delayed in, in some situation because he's God, amen? He knows things that we don't know. You know, it, it's uh, amazing when you're in management, stuff like that, you know, there's a lot of things that goes on uh, between you and your upper management that the people don't know about. They don't realize uh, some of the uh, things that you've got, the uh, goals and budgets and things that you got to meet and got to do to make certain things happen. They just see what's right here. And it's, it's funny, I'll never forget uh, when I used to work with my company, I started out uh, as a delivery boy. And, I, and then about a year later, we hired this guy named Roy Porter. And he was in shipping and receiving. So here's me and this dude in the back back there. But me and Roy was in the back. And we just knew what was happening in that area, okay? And God uh, blessed me and Roy both and started promoting us. We went from the back uh, as a delivery boy Worked all the way through the, uh, the the procedures of the company. We did purchasing. We did uh, uh, we did uh, billing. We did uh, managing. Uh, we did opening the store. We did it. We started uh, we started in the back. After a number of years, we worked our way all the way up through uh, around the top up there. Okay, and when we was in the top, it seemed like every time I'd get a new position within the company in the branch, my eyes would be open more. You know. And 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 what, and that, I just want to tell you that uh, that's how God is. See, you know, sometimes we don't get exactly what we want the way we think we ought to get it. But God is an all-knowing God, and it's His purpose. He knows what we need best. Okay, He knows everything. So sometimes, uh, maybe uh, if our if we seem like our prayers is hindered a little bit, we can look and see and remember that it's in the hands of the King. Amen. He is all wise. That's who he is. So he knows everything. Asked. And we need to ask if one has faith or not, uh, depending on, and this is some of his purposes, depending on what, what is asked or if one has faith or not. If promised in this life, then refuse to give up until you receive it. In other words, if you're asking in faith, and you crying out to the Lord, and it's in his word, and it's according to him, you can stand on that and get ready to receive it and prepare to receive it. And see, God's going to look at, be looking to see if you got faith. I want to tell you right now, sometimes uh, I have to ask God, God, give me faith. You know, God, you said faith of a mustard seed or move a mountain. I need that faith. God, give me, sometimes I need that faith. You know, sometimes in my spiritual walk with the Lord, I'm strong in faith in one area, and then in another area, my faith is not as strong. And I might have to do like them uh, disciples did. Lord, help me with my unbelief and help me get in a situation where I have that faith that will move this mountain that's in my life. You see? So sometimes it's us, isn't it? You know, we do what we're supposed to do, but uh, then again, uh, the devil comes and he tries to put fear, unbelief, he just tries to discourage you. He tries to do all kinds of things to give you an excuse. Well, the Lord ain't going to answer this because. Let me tell you, if it's in God's word and, and God's word is abiding in you, see, there's some things we have to do. You've got to have God's word abiding in you. What, how do you do that? You continually stay in God's word and pray and read and, and get God's word in there. You know, there's certain scriptures that you need to know that's going to give you strength in, in time of warfare and prayer and persevering on for something that you need. Amen? you got to do your part. There's some things we have to do. and But if we're doing our part and doing what the, uh, God has called us to do and everything, we need to, uh, to just with confidence that God is going to answer our prayer. Now look at here. Let's look at uh, Matthew 17, 20. It's talking about mountain. We get rid of these mountains in our life. Sometimes our mountains are our finances. Sometimes they're health. Uh, sometimes they're family. Sometimes we have a lot of stuff goes on in our life that's really big to us. But guess what? God's God. Amen? A, a mountain to him ain't nothing because he can get rid of it. Or he can make it, can't he? Look at here. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith, there's a grain of mustard seed. Now, a grain of mustard seed is real little. But how do you grow that faith? You know, you water that mustard seed and, and uh, feed it and all that stuff. That thing grows in one of the biggest herbs that there is. But I want to tell you right now, I have to tell the Lord sometime, Lord, 
my faith is like a, a grain of mustard seed. But you said if I had the faith, that much faith of that mustard seed, you said right here, because of your unbelief, early I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, and you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence uh, to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Now, I don't know about y'all, but that's where I want to get. Guess what? I haven't arrived yet. I, I hope I can get there. And if I can get there where nothing's impossible to me, I can pray for my loved ones, the people in the congregation, the church, and I mean, uh, great things is going to happen to give God the glory. Amen? I want to get there to do that, don't you? That should be our desire to get in a position uh, with our Lord that uh, nothing is impossible with us either because he gave us all the tools and everything we need. You know that? You ever read some books? Benny Hinn, Finney, some of them. Smith Wigglesworth and all of them, you know. Did you know some of the great anointings they had? Boy, the Lord just gave it to them. Uh-uh. You got to pay a price too. You, you don't believe it. Look at Benny Hinn, some of those, I call them generals. They've went through uh, suffering for our Lord to get to where they at. Amen? Just like Jeanette. She's been through. She's got my telling Nathan the other day, I've been in it about 27 years. Jeanette, you've been in what, 40, 50 years? 50 years at least. And I listened to somebody who's been in there 50 years now only being 27 <laughs> because they've been through some... Uh, she's been through some uh, things that uh, you can't imagine to get in the uh, spiritual uh, level that she's is with the Lord. It, it comes by uh, some of these things that we have to go through suffering. You see, the Bible says we have to suffer for Christ the way he suffered. But I tell you right now, if you're doing your part, if you're studying God's word and you're getting God's word in you and it comes time for you to pray and you pray according to God's word like you spoke to, you need to expect the, the results to come. Now, sometimes don't, God don't answer it the way you want it. He might answer it in a different way. But he's going to answer it. He's going to answer it. And, uh, you know, he's a mighty God. Look here. And it shall be removed, that mountain. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. Now, when we asked, we asked in prayer in Matthew, <coughs> excuse me, 21, 22. Let's look right here and just see what God's word said. That's where the power's at. It's in God's Word. You know, you know. I tell you right now, I get out there uh, sometimes and uh, I've been witnessing the people are trying to tell people about certain things and uh, uh, the Lord and everything. And all of a sudden, it just seemed like I ain't getting nowhere. You ever been there? Because I'm telling what I'm thinking. And then I realize the Lord puts on me telling my word, telling my word. There's power in that word, you see. That's where it's at. I can get up here and uh, uh, speak a thousand words but there's nothing like God's word is power. Amen? So, we want to look right here. It says, And all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believe and you shall receive them. Is that God's word? And what does it say? If you ask it in prayer, you're supposed to believe and you receive it. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I got some prayers I prayed and I ain't received it yet but I'm still going to press on with the Lord whether I receive it down here or up there. I'm still going forward, amen? But I'm here to tell you too that I have prayed to the Lord uh, about certain things and bam, I've got to answer sometimes just like that. Man, he shows up uh, sometimes when you uh, don't expect him and it's awesome when he does that, amen? It's just awesome. You ever get an unexpected blessing? All of a sudden, you got blessed and knocked your socks off. Ain't that, is that not exciting to get an unexpected blessing? And there it is. That's just all. See, that's the way God is. That's the way he is. Amen. Uh, he's just an awesome God, and we can expect our prayers to be answered. And all things, whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive them. Now, that's just plain and simple. And you know when I asked in prayer what I tell God? God, you said in your word, all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, if I believe it, you shall receive. I shall receive. That's, I, I, I quote God's word to him a lot. Amen? I mean, that's what we're supposed to do. If you've got situations going on in your life 
and uh, you need specific things, you need to go in there and find some scripture. There's some scripture in there somewhere about it. And you find God's word about it, and you start giving it to him. Say, Lord, your word says in Isaiah 53, by your stripes we are healed. Your word says in 1 Peter 2, 24, we were healed by your stripes. You see, it just goes on and on. This is what your word says. Lay hands on the sick, and they'll be healed. That's what your word says, God. I claim your word in this situation. Amen? We just have to stand strong on that. It's hard sometimes. And I got to admit, sometimes, you know, uh, uh, there's certain things I pray and I feel the power and I know God's done something. And then they, sometimes I pray and I say, oh, no, no, it's up to the Lord, you know. <laughs> He's going to have to do this, you know. I'm just going to be honest with you. The human part of me is, is there too sometimes. There's where we have to need to have that faith of a mustard seed. That tells me a little bit of faith to go a long way. That's what it looked like to me. Amen. Look here. Let's look at Hebrews 11. We need to have faith in God and believe that he is. I tell you right now, he is an awesome God, and he is real, and he, he's just an awesome God. Uh, sometimes he just comes on you unexpectedly, amen? He does. I mean, you just be doing something, and all of a sudden he just, he just comes on you. And, and, and when he does, uh, it's such an honor that he does that, amen? It's an honor that he comes on you like that, I'll tell you right now. I'll just give you an example. I, uh, and it, it, it hadn't happened in a while, but uh, one night, me and Saturday night, I think it was, me and my wife was eating supper, and uh, we started watching Slaying the Giants or something like it. It was a Christian movie. and uh, But we just started watching a little bit. We were starting eating our supper, you know. And, man, I, I just felt not, I just felt the power of God start coming on me, and I'm trying to eat, you know. And he got stronger and stronger. And I'm trying to eat. I had some stuff we'd cooked. It was good, and I was hungry. But he kept stronger and stronger. And finally, I put my fork down, and I started weeping because his awesome power was on me so strong. I, 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 I mean, it was just unimaginable. And he just kept coming on me, and I tried to start eating again. And I was praising him. I tried to eat again. All of a sudden, I throwed it down, and I'm, I'm speaking in tongues. I mean, the power of God hit me, and he was all over me. It was awesome. And uh, and I, I I tried to go back to eating again, and he hit me again. Finally, I got up and I went in the hall, and I was shouting and screaming in tongues. The dogs and my wife, and and uh, my wife knew what was going on, but my dogs were raising cane. They didn't know what was going on. They, they I feel like they knew it was something holy. <laughs> But the power of God, you ever had that happen to you? I mean, he just come on me and just kept coming stronger and stronger. And, man, he's doing something. And, and it was a good thing. I could tell it was a good thing. And I was interceding for something. But it was a good thing. I knew it was. I can, I, 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 you know. But he does that. What does that tell me? I want to show you what it tells me. And it tells you, too, you know. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. He is God, isn't he? And see, by that happening to me, it just reconfirmed that he is alive. He's real. We serve a true risen Savior. Amen? And when he speaks to you, you ever have him speak to you and call you a name? Boy, it just tears me up when he says my name sometimes. You know, I've heard him say my name or in a prophecy or something. It just, I'm just giving you an example here, but look here what it says. It's, nothing's impossible. Uh, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And so what are we supposed to do uh, as our Christian walk with the Lord? We're supposed to seek him in a daily manner, y'all. It's a continuous thing with the Lord. You've got to refill uh, your spiritual tank uh, of fuel every day. You've got to continue to grow with the Lord. Amen? It's a continuing thing. But now, getting back to this lady, I'm trying to build some ground right here. Getting back to this lady, she kept persisting to that judge. And, and God, the Lord Jesus gave us an example of what we're supposed to do with the Father. Persistent, keep going back to him. God, I need this. I need this, Lord. 
Lord, help me with this or heal my body or help me financially or help me in this area or my spiritual walk with you. Whatever the need might be, you need to, and you need it and you know it's important. You need to continually uh, uh, persevere and just keep pressing on uh, to the Lord for that. Amen? Let's go a little bit further right here. Look, you got to believe that he is, though, uh, to get answered prayer in some of this. Look here, James 1, 5, and 8. We got to ask and how? We ask in faith. If any of you like wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and unbridled not, and it shall be given to him. So when we pray, we got to, what is our like? Lord, Lord, I need this, I need that. Uh, I need this. Uh, this is some of my needs here, Lord. Help me with this. Let's go a little bit further right here. And look, uh, uh, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that's wavering is like the wave, uh, is like a wave of the sea driven uh, with the wind and tossed. Let's look at number seven right here. But let him uh, not that man think that he shall receive, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double minded man is unstable in all his ways. So see, when you pray out to the Lord and cry out to the Lord, you got to stand solid. You can't be wishy-washy and getting back waves being tossed about. You got to stand and say, God, your word says, by your stripes I'm healed. I claim your healing, and this is what you said. And Lord, I cry out to you because it's written, God. I want to remind you what your word says, God, that it is written by your stripes. I am healed. I claim my healing in this situation. In Jesus' name, I'm using that as an example there, see. <clears throat> we got to just keep persistently coming to them. And I know there's some of you in here that persistently keep coming back. And one day, it's going to happen. Amen? In Jesus' name. Uh, it's God's all in his time, and praise God. Now, let's look. Um, you know, when we cry out to the Lord, we ask God that give us to all men. We ask in faith uh, to get our answer. And uh, we pray to the Father in uh, uh, John sixteen twenty three. I want to look uh, for uh, let not oh, oh James one five and eight ask in faith oh yeah for let not think that he shall receive anything. I done seen that one. That's yeah, that's the one I want right there. Pray to the Father, and in that day. You shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that's truly, truly, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Now, how do we pray? You know, sometimes you see these people that say, well, I can get to God this way. I can cry out to God. You can't get to God no way but through his son Jesus. And he's telling us right here, when you pray, you pray to the Father, and you asked in the name of Jesus. Amen. There it is right there. That's a, that's a real uh, good. And that's pray to the Father. And uh, John 14, 12 through 15, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, and the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. Now, I'm here to tell you, God gave us every tool we need. His Son came down and suffered paid the price for you and I and gave us the authority as an attorney down here. We have authority to do greater works than his son did. Think about it. Because he's given us all the tools to do it. And think about this. In the Lord Jesus' day, they didn't have jets, did they? Couldn't go to the Dominican Republic and stay a couple of weeks and fly right back and see thousands of people like that. Let's go a little bit further right here and look. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. When we pray, ask it in Jesus' name. We, any, anything that happens, anybody that gets healed or something happens in your life uh, that God does something, we give the glory to God because he did it. Amen. Always keep yourself humble before the Lord and acknowledge him. You know, I've heard people uh, I prayed for people and done things for people before, and I've seen God move on them, and they'll say, yeah, I got better, but they don't give God the credit, okay? You want to give him the credit because he's the one who, he's the healer, amen? That's who he is. Let's go a little bit further right here. <coughs> and uh, it says right here, let's go to, if you shall ask anything in my name, I'll do it. 
Let's look at Romans 26. Romans 26, this is one I want to stop on just a little bit right here. It talks about by the Holy Spirit in Romans 26. We need to pray sometime in the Spirit. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, there's been times that if, you got, if you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, I encourage you to use that uh, holy language that God has given you. Because I'm going to tell you right now, sometimes I've, in my life I've been in a position where I did not know how to pray. I did not know what to pray because I, was, I needed help. And you know, sometimes I've cried out to Jesus. The Bible says Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father interceding for you and I. Well, sometimes I'll cry out to Jesus, Lord Jesus, would you pray about this for me? Help me in this situation, Lord. Pray for me. I asked you. He's my brother, you know. And uh, I do it that way sometimes. And then there's another way he's given us here. He has given us those that's baptized in the Holy Ghost. And if you ain't baptized in the Holy Ghost, pray that God's going to give it to you, and he will. It'll come. You just keep seeking it. It'll come. But when it does, you'll be endued with power, amen, from on high. And you'll have a holy language that you can pray in. If you have a, a, you know, some, a lot of needs and stuff, you will have a heavenly Father and a heavenly language that you can pray in. Sometimes you don't know how to pray, but the Holy Spirit that's in you knows how to pray, and he'll pray for those uh, things exactly what's needed, amen. Now, that's a comforting thing knowing that uh, that can happen. Let's look right here in Romans. <clears throat> Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Was that? The Holy Spirit that's in us, uh, you can pray and speak uh, uh, in tongues and pray in tongues. Sometimes I'll ask the Lord. I'll say, Lord, Holy Spirit, I'm going to ask, would you pray about this situation? Amen. I've done it many times. And boy, a lot of times when I'm praying in the Spirit, God knows exactly what to pray. And I just surrender myself to the Holy Spirit, and he prays through me. Amen? It's, it's so exciting. You know, sometimes when I go, uh, I'm on a trip or I'm driving down the road or something, you know, uh, uh, if i got an hour drive or something, you know, by myself or whatever, I'll start talking to the Lord, and I'll ask the Lord and say, Lord, I want to pray for so-and-so. And I'll say, Lord, uh, I'm just going to use Steve an example. I'm just going to... Lord, I want you to pray for my brother Steve, Holy Ghost. I want you to pray for him and his needs, what's going on, because you know I want you to pray for him, God. Man, I might just the whole time pray for Steve in 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 a holy language. or And then when I get through, and, and listen to this, when I get through, I might have 30 more minutes or something. You know, I say, well, I'm going to pray for Gene. A Holy Ghost, pray for Gene. And the Holy Spirit will start praying and praying and praying for things that I don't know how to pray. Uh, the Holy Ghost knows all about Gene and Steve and you and I. Amen? And he'll just pray for us. And, man, that's an awesome uh, thing that we have with the Lord to do that. Look right here. It says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray, for we as we ought but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. See, the Spirit is praying with groanings we can't even imagine, but it's a holy language going directly to God. Amen. Now, that's a powerful area of prayer right there, y'all. And if you've got that, use that as much as you can. Amen. Now, uh, we need to pray in the Spirit. And, you know, uh, we need to be in harmony with the Word in John 15, 7. If, if, the word abide, if you abide in the Word and the Word abides in you, ask what you will. Let's look right here. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. You see there? You've got to have some Word in you, too. you got to pray and, uh, and, and, and memorize Scriptures and, and, uh, and, 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 and just get God's Word, just fill up with God's Word and... Then it says right here, if you abide in me, my words abide in you, ask what you will. She'll be done unto you because we're his, amen? So we asked uh, in, in prayer, look at here. <coughs> Excuse me. And one of the last uh, ones I want to talk about here is in Philippians 4, 6. Uh, we're supposed to give thanksgiving to the Lord. You know, when we pray and ask for things and stuff like that, we're supposed to thank God. We're supposed to praise God. We're supposed to worship God. Look at here. Be, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplications with 
thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. Is that what it says? You know, he knows about it anyway, but we're supposed to let our request be made known unto him. And when we do it, we're supposed to do it with thanksgiving. God, it's an honor I can come to you and praise you and worship you and thank you so much for what you did for my life uh, this period of my life today. But, Lord, I need this uh, in my situation. I'm thanking you for it in advance, God. Help me with this situation. Amen. And God will do that because he hears those prayers. So when we pray, we're supposed to ask uh, uh, in faith, and we're supposed to pray to the Father. In Jesus' name, and by the Holy Spirit, we can pray. And we need to be in harmony with the Word. Uh, and we need to have uh, with praise for the answer prayer. You get an answer prayer, boy, let God know. Thank you, Lord, for doing that for me. I know you did it, and I want to acknowledge that to you. And I want to praise you and thank you for doing that. Amen? We're supposed to uh, acknowledge him in thanksgiving. Now, I want to talk to these folks on the Internet uh, right here uh, before I uh, do what we, we're going to do. If you've got something going on in your life, you need to be persistent. If you're crying out to God and you're not getting answered in prayer, you need to take an inventory of your life and look and see, hey, if there's something in my life, have I got sin in my life or i got something going on or do I have unforgiveness in my, uh, 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 in my uh, heart uh, with somebody? If I do, Lord, I want to make it right. To please forgive me. I repent of it, God. And after you do that and, and ask God to... Uh, 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 cleanse you of those uh, things and then cry out to God in prayer and obey God's word and have faith uh, and let his word abide in you and you can expect answered prayer. If you don't have the Lord Jesus Christ in you, uh, tonight would be an exciting, the greatest thing that ever happened to you. If you just ask the Lord to come in your heart tonight, he will come in your heart because he's real, he's alive. This word uh, we've been looking at tonight is truth uh, and it has awesome power over mankind because why our god is the one who created us hallelujah praise god if you want him in your heart tonight just ask him say lord forgive me of my sins and uh, lord uh, i want you to be lord of my life i repent that i sinned against you and you ask him to come in your life and mean it he will come in your life you mean it uh, uh, from your heart your center being of man he'll come into your life god bless you in the name of jesus amen praise god Amen. Now.